A tragic crash on Bel Air Road earlier this week still has many reeling. Two days ago, a 68-year-old woman and her 9-year-old grandson died after flipping over and ramming into a parked car. Our Dennis Valera is on your corner in northeast Baltimore. He spoke with a city councilman representing Bel Air Edison about this tragedy and what's being done to help the community. City Councilman Antonio Glover says that his community is still so shaken from what happened, he's now joining the effort to help his community heal. I did talk with one of the family members of the victims over the phone. Understandably, they just want their privacy at this time. Pieces of shattered glass and other fragments still sit at the corner of Bel Air Road and Kentucky Avenue, where the car was Sharon Warsham, her grandson Xavier Dukes, and another child crashed. It was a very tragic uh, situation. Surveillance video WJZ obtained shows Warsham's car was zipping through and hitting a car before flipping and hitting another car. Councilman Antonio Glover's district covers the Bel Air Edison community. He's felt the impact from his constituents, also reaching out to the victim's family. He tells WJZ this community is tight knit. We're, we're just family, you know. Uh, we're we're all in close proximity to each other. You know, when you're born and raised here, and you go to school here, and many families that are still here, um, you know, we we become one big family. Glover says his office has already had things in the works to unify the community, including rehabbing a stretch of Bel Air Road. Uh, we've been doing some things with. Uh, streetscape. We're at 65 percent of the project right now, but you're going to see a totally different uh, Bella Edison community coming really soon. So we've been working on that since I've been in my administration. But he's not alone. Shrine of the Little Flower Church, with the help of local Catholic high schools, is also hosting a pancake breakfast Saturday, hoping to offer a shoulder for anyone struggling to cope with what happened. Make this an effort to bring everybody in who wants to come and just mourn together, share their stories, you know, share their grief. The church will be open during that time and people can come and pray. That pancake breakfast starts at 8 Saturday morning. No one will be turned away. Reporting in Northeast Baltimore, I'm Dennis Valera for WJZ.